my name's Tom, and uh, if you're like me during this whole pandemic thing, uh, you've had kind of a problem with masks in general. But when you wear a mask, I'm going to show you, I'll put this one on, the typical, not too tight, and you have glasses, here's what often happens as you walk around or talk or do the various things. As you walk up steps or breathe or do almost anything, talk, your glasses steam up. And the problem is that the air is coming up through these little tiny crevices. And whether you have an N95 mask or double mask or paper masks, they all kind of do the same thing. Uh, you can pull these tight, you can twist the ear loops, and you can do all sorts of little tricks. And, and some masks actually have a little uh, nose thing like this one here. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but these nose things, like this particular nose thing, only goes to about this point here, to my, where my fingers are. Uh, the problem with that, I'll put that on again, is that the air, so here's where the ends of the nose clip end, and on the air, this is all just cloth here. So when I breathe, the air is coming up through these spots here. So the ideal solution for all of this is to make a better nose piece. Now I've seen all sorts of things. Um, this one actually has a little, this actually is a little bit big on me. Uh, I've seen flaps that go up, but the flaps are still just cloth flaps and they don't seem to stop much of the airflow. You can still steam up your glasses uh, pretty easily. So what I decided to do was I used some of my home improvement uh, knowledge about materials and what works and what doesn't work. And I decided to improve the nose pieces on these things and finally make a steam proof mask for glasses. So here's what I'm going to do. Take a brand new mask. Uh, I happen to use the type called Wedding Star. And I'm doing a gray mask so it's actually easier to see on camera. These Wedding Star masks are actually fairly nice. Uh, they're fairly popular. You can get them on Amazon. Okay, so here it is. It's a nice gray mask. And it has a two things. It has one, it has a filter pocket in the back. We'll worry about that later. Uh, but it also has uh, this little nose piece right here. And it does bend. You can kind of see how it bends. There you go. And it goes to right here and to right here. In fact, and this one actually has stitching on both sides to keep that nose piece in place. So this is actually kind of a hollow cloth uh, pocket or tube across the top. It's all sewn up. When I put this on, oh boy, I seemed up right away. Uh, even if I push this against my nose, it only goes to here. It doesn't cover the rest of my face because when it's pulled back, I actually have a little bit of a gap in there. You can see that. And again, walking up steps, running, catching the bus, whatever, you get steam. Uh, on colder days, it's obviously going to be a lot worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this mask. And the first thing I'm going to do with this mask is to get rid of that stitching. To get rid of the stitching, you can do a couple different things. Uh, you can use a, a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. I'm going to do this little thing that I came out of my wife's sewing kit. And what this is, you'll see these little, these grip, a grip big top. You pull the top off and it has like a little hooky thing on it. Well, that little hook thing is very, very sharp. That's actually a little tiny blade. And what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get this on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. I'm going to stick this into that this little point into the string of the stitch. And all I'm gonna do is pull, there we go, and cut. And I just cut the string. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. And what happens is it kind of shreds, oh, there we go, I can actually pull that out. It kind of shreds that string. And with a couple more pulls and yanks, I will get that string right out of there. And what that's gonna do, Let's see if I don't want to cut the pocket on the front at least. I should probably do this on the back so if I mess it up. Okay, I'll start pulling on the back. And what happens is... Okay. And as I pull this out, I pull the stitching out, the little nose piece in here will begin to slide around. It'll, and I'll actually make a solid tube all the way down the side of the mask because once I get the stitching out there's nothing to stop that little nose piece from riding around there we go 
There's another little cut. There's another little cut. Okay, here's the last of the string. And it looks, it, the, the little line is still there. You can see the little line, but the actual string is gone. So I can actually move that around. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. Oh, wait, I got it. Okay, and there we go. That's the last little piece of string. So now I have a full, this is the top of the mask here. I have a full tube of cloth on the top of the mask. And again, there's no piece of sitting right here, but I can actually push it and slide it down in one direction or the other. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this nose piece out. Now to take this little nose piece out, I'm gonna to need to cut a hole in it, in the, in the seams. Okay, you can do a couple different ways. Uh, you could actually, if you wanna be clever, you can actually take some of the string off of right there and kind of just slide it down. Uh, I might do that. I'm gonna do that and hope that the whole thing doesn't kind of unravel. Uh, what you can do is you can use a little super glue on the dot of the string to kind of keep it from unraveling. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's see if I can show you this. I'm gonna, right at the edge, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a, one of my strings out there and go, boop, and I just cut the string. And I'm gonna open up about uh, two or three stitches worth. I don't want to go too crazy because that stitching also holds the interior liner in. So I just want to go a little bit, just enough to kind of get up in there. Maybe one more. Let me see. It might start to rip out. Okay. Okay. So I've popped a couple stitches just on the end here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my hand, I'm just gonna kinda, of, my finger down, just kinda of push that nose piece down. And let's see, there's the nose piece. Oh, it went down too far. Move back a little bit. Okay, and what I can do is I can start to weasel that little nose piece out right there. And ta-da! This is what that bendable nose piece was. All it is is like a little twist tie almost. I don't even see any wires in there, but it must be something. Uh, but when you push out over your nose, it doesn't cover up much your nose. You still have all the space in here for all this air to come out of. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. So again, all I have right now in a mask is a tube across the top. It's empty. I have a little broken seam right down here where I took out the little plastic nose piece. I'm going to replace that with something that I know very well from my home improvement days. I'm going to replace that with 12 gauge wire. 12 gauge wire is thick stuff. And the way wires work is the lower the number, kind of the thicker and heavier it is. So 14 gauge wire is actually thinner stuff and it's a little more pliable, a little more bendable. But 12 gauge wire is what's used in a lot of house wiring. Um, it's pretty strong stuff. You can get it in a lot of different places. I have a whole reel of it downstairs that I use for various projects. But I just cut up a little piece of it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this 12 gauge wire and put it into this mask. So I'm gonna take my, my end here and take the inside of my mask. Let me see if I can show you this here. Again, I have this little empty hole this little un, unstitched piece. I'm going to stick it and just kind of push it in. And let me just work it through there. Okay, work it through, work it through, work it through, work it through. Up oh, there we go, right at the end. Okay, so there it is. So now I'm going to go down like, oh, do you have too much of it? Yes, so that's how it's going to work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of go right to the edge. And I'm going to cut it with some wire cutters. Uh, go right over where the seam ends. Hopefully I can just kind of stretch things and keep it in there. There we go. There we go. And now I'm just going to tuck that. I kind of pull and stretch. I'm going to just tuck that up into the, the actual mask. And I'm going to push it down a little bit and tuck it up. 
and then it'll pop back down to the sewn section. There. Okay. Now, now what I have is a mask with a giant 12 gauge wire in it. But the key to this mask, here's the hit, here's the key, is that the bendable part, the posable part, the pliable part is A, really has some, it really holds its shape really, really well because that's how 12 gauge wire works. But also, uh, it extends the whole length of the mask. Here's what I can do. I can put this on my bridge of my nose, kind of push it in, kind of pry it out to my face. Let me put this on real quick here, let's see. Okay, that's not entirely bad, let's see here. Push it in a little bit. I can feel my breath here. Nothing is going up through here. I don't see up my glasses. Um, it's really all there is to it. This 12 gauge wire, now watch this. When I take this off, it completely keeps its shape. Uh, that is the shape of my face. Now, obviously as I wear it, or as I move it around, as I put it back on, I'm gonna just readjust it. And all you do is just readjust it. Push it in, pull it out, widen it up. Sometimes I'll actually re reposition it. I'll widen it out and I'll push it in. But I've been doing this mask. I've been using this 12 gauge wire at work where I have to wear a mask. I've been doing this for, oh geez, by about three or four months now. And I walk up five flights of stairs every day going to work. And though I'm out of breath and almost ready to fall over, my glasses never steam up. Uh, so this is actually a real nice way, really, really simple, really, really cheap. 12 gauge wire is dirt cheap. Get it at a home improvement store, get a little reel of it. Uh, you might even have some sitting around the house. Go ahead and take one of these masks, cut it out and pop it in. That's really all there is to it. When it comes time to wash this mask, all you need to do is turn it around, push your, your filter, pop out your wire, and throw it in the laundry or wash it or however you want to do that. Pop the wire back in afterwards. I wouldn't wash it with the wire in. Uh, nothing will happen to the wire, but the ends of the wire could be a little sharp. And I've actually done this before, and I actually had it like rip a hole right in the end just because it was being tossed around for an hour in the washing machine. Uh, so I just take the wire out, wash it, then put the wire back in. One more nice thing about these Wedding Star masks, uh, and I'll link to them down below, is that they have a filter pocket, and you can put any kind of filter you want in there. Uh, I'm not a big fan of charcoal filters. They're kind of bulky, and they're kind of weird. Like, I don't really do that. Um, what I have found is, again, from home improvement knowledge, I found some material that is actually Merv 16. Now, your home house filters, your home house heaters, uh, furnaces, and air conditioners, they have filters of Merv 9, 10, 11, 12. 16 is really pretty high end. This is probably the highest you can get from a, from a residential standpoint. Uh, and you can breathe through it. It's, um, it does let air through, not a lot. Uh, it is a little bit, uh, it'll catch most anything. Merv 16 is like basically hospital grade, uh, filters for air. So what you can do is you can take some of this stuff and you can actually put this stuff into the filter pocket. Uh, what I've actually done before is I cut a, a hole on the other side of, of this so I can just kind of pull it all the way through, but you can also just kind of shove it in there. I will just take this piece that I have and I can cut it down. I can do cut it by shapes. I can do whatever I want, but I'm just going to just, I'm just shoving it into that pocket. Um, and then I'm going to just put it back on. So there we go. There it's, it's shoved in. It's not real straight, but good enough. And it's in the, it's in there. Uh, and there's my top. I put it back on. Again, you want you, once it's in the, once it's actually in your mask, you don't actually feel it. Uh, but it is actually filtering out things that the, the cloth couldn't possibly. And then multiple layers of cloth and the Merge 16 and the little filter pockets. And that's a third layer there. You should be good for pulling anything in and out. The other nice thing about this is because I'm not blowing any air out this way, I'm also not sucking in any air this way. So this is another kind of a, a, a nice tight thing. I have a little bit of, a, of, a, of airflow down here, which I can tighten these a little bit. I can twist them and that'll help a little bit as well. Uh, but that's kind of what it comes right down to. This wire helps it mold to your face. And once it's mold, molded to your face, it keeps it prevents all the air from going up into your eyes and your glasses will not fog after this. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, go ahead and give it a like or a, a subscribe or hit the bell or whatever you do these days. 
uh, and I'll have some more home improvement stuff coming soon.